All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Council Chat. With me today is Vice Mayor Becky Tuttle, District 2. Thank you. How are you today? <laughs> I am doing good. It's Friday. Yep. And it's April Fool's Day, and I can't think of anything funny to say right now, but we'll figure something out. Yeah. I was joking that, um, you know, we could pull lots of pranks. I usually do some things around the house, but I haven't done anything yet this today, so I still have chance. Yesterday was crazy with the weather. We had all four seasons in yeah. one day. Yeah. When I went outside to get my n local newspaper, and there was snowing, and then it rained, and then we had sun and wind, and so I'm glad today seems like a calmer weather day and a great day for a Friday. Yeah, you know, when, before I was on council, I would uh, joke about the water having dihydrogen monoxide in it, but as a council member, I think people would take that too serious. So, That's a good one. <laughs> next week, we have several big ticket items. Some of those are administrative, and some will uh, involve some public feedback. Yeah, so one in my district that I'm excited about is we have a public hearing for, IR, for IRBs for web industrial. Um, I just had a conference call this morning. It was really kind of strange how it happened, but my husband was flying back home to North Carolina to see his family, and the passenger sitting next to him asked if he could borrow his phone charger. So then they started chatting, and the gentleman that he was sitting next to was the CEO of a company out of Florida who was visiting Wichita looking for warehouse space. And one of the spaces that they're interested in is a, a line with this item. But he, so the conference call this morning was with the Greater Wichita Partnership and our Eco Devo team. And he, the CEO of the company, was telling us how excited they are and that they're going to select Wichita as one of their four new super centers for warehousing, for distribution across the nation. But he was impressed with the facilities that we have available, with the potential for workforce, with the economic incentive tools at the state and at the local level. And so it was really, when I opened up my agenda packet and I saw this, because this is an addition, you know, another warehousing space that will be available. This is what people are coming from all across the country to look for yeah. right here in Wichita. That and we're centrally located in the nation. That was also appeal. But he mentioned several times that our trained workforce was something that was appealing to them as well. Yeah, that's always good to hear. A small world. The, yeah, I know what plane. a small world. Yeah. So I'm sending my husband on more trips. That's what <laughs> I'm saying, because he's now economic development for the city of Wichita. But I, I really do appreciate when anyone invests in our community and this is just another great opportunity to have industrial warehouse um, you know speculative industrial buildings and something that I'm sure will be um, sought after pretty quickly not even just locally but by entities all across the nation yeah we're definitely looking forward to that uh, we also will be discussing a proposed amendment to the Delano Stadium redevelopment plan and then also we have some administrative items um, such as uh, data cable replacements and city hall maintenance. I'm so low tech. I always joke with our IT team here that I'm their job security. <laughs> um, so when I was looking over this, it looks like we're going to be doing some improvements and we're doing them on an incremental basis um, as our budget allows. But primarily it's going to be in city hall on the first floor is going to be the top priority. So we'll look forward to hearing more from our IT team about this. This is part of our um, adoption capital improvement program and it's going to be a fifty thousand dollar budget item so making sure that we're keeping up with our IT demands and needs yeah every time IT comes down the issues I have get solved in like 30 seconds and they make me feel like man I just don't know anything it's so funny you say that I said the same thing so I had an issue um, yesterday where I came in and I was on a short timeline and I had to get some work done I'm sure it happens to everyone who's listening today right we all have that and so I couldn't get in my computer. I could not. I and and I couldn't figure out why. And it wasn't the new Duo push thing. And so IT came down because we kind of said this is an emergency. Could you run down real quick? And I kid you not, he pushed one button, and it all got <laughs> fixed. And so I told him that he had to stay longer, and he had to make it look like it was hard, and maybe some sweat. <laughs> so yeah, he fixed it in two seconds. Every time. Every time. Every time. We will also be discussing public works items, including replacement of large water meters and sewer lift rehabilitation. And that's definitely important, especially with the elevated awareness of importance of investing in our water infrastructure after last week's leak and last fall's main break. So we are definitely investing more into that. And this is a, definitely a good item as we continue to do that on the way to the completion of our water treatment plant in 2025. We are also uh, excited to discuss reassuring water rebates for 2022. 
Yeah, so I'll look forward to those agenda items for sure. You know, part of the function of the city, we we want to be, our mission is to be a well-run city and to have safe and reliable infrastructure as part of that. So yeah. excited to to hear more about that. Um, we're also going to look at an ordinance change to our citizen review board, and it's aimed at increasing transparency. And we're doing this on one reading versus two. And I have my DAB, one of my DAB members, my district advisory board member, and I are going to meet. She's um, involved in the Citizen Review Board and has been giving me updates and, and talking to me a lot about this. I think, and this is certainly not my area of expertise, much more your area, so I'd love to hear your perspective. But right now it's a 13-member board and the city manager makes the appointments. And one of the changes that will happen is that each of the city, six city council members and the mayor will make appointments. So we'll have seven appointments from the elected officials and then the city manager will be able to make the other six appointees. And then the other change is procedural where the individual who makes the initial complaint to the professional standards board will be notified of the board's review and will have the opportunity to attend the meeting which I understand has not happened in the past and then there'll be a summary provided to them as well so what it sounds like to me is the procedural changes will make sure that the person making the complaint has follow through through the entire process and you know I said before it's it seems to me like it's going to provide much more transparency and, and I'm, I'm interested in the concept of you know having us a point to this board whereas a po we haven't in the past um, so really looking forward to you know talking to community members between now and Tuesday and then um, hearing more about it from the bench but I'd love your perspective yeah I, I think this is great um, you know I, I think Bob has appointed some some great people to the board um, I know that there has been increased demand from community that those of us who are held accountable to folks from votes uh, make appointments this is a great change um, for the public to know this was actually in the works before this uh, latest uh, incident with law enforcement know. and those text messages. Um, but that is part of the reason why this will be uh, declaring an emergency and approved on a first reading and not two. So we can make Excellent. sure that this is done. And another change is that the uh, review board will be able to uh, issue a public report. Okay. which is what many people say there's a there's an issue the person who files a complaint never hears anything and then the public never hears anything and this way they'll be able to issue what they found their concerns what their recommendations are in a public space without worrying about repercussions from doing so so I, I think those are really good revisions um, of course I'm also wanting to hear more from the community on that but this is one really good change happening um, and I think will also help the transparency around what we're going through right now and they will issue their findings publicly on what they've found from what's going on with the text messages Great. I appreciate your feedback and helping me to understand it. This is, like as I mentioned, an area that I haven't had as much experience in since I've been in council. So it's a it's a great opportunity for me to learn more. As yeah. always, right? We, yeah. we have we have to know a a, lit, a little about a lot yeah. is what I tell yeah. people all the time. All the time. Uh, we'll also be exploring pursuing a renaming of the Maya Angelou Branch Library and specifically a uh, District One community member requested us to consider renaming the library. What the city council will be uh, considering on Tuesday is naming the library board, the naming committee, to consider this request. And they will have a dialogue and either uh, approve or uh, reject that request. And then that will come back to council as their recommendation, either to deny that or approve it. So this will get that process started if, if anyone is interested in giving their thoughts on that. Um, definitely stay tuned on Tuesday uh, at our council meeting, but also to the library board as they have deeper dive uh, discussion on that. Okay, great. Um, this is probably one of the largest agenda packets I've seen since yeah. I've been on council in it's three years. It's almost a tuttle. Yeah, it's almost a tuttle in <laughs> itself, that's for sure. So um, we're also going to be approving um, approving improvements, potentially improvements to West Street in District 4. I know that we received a letter of support from the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Board, so um, be interested in seeing if I can talk to any of those folks and just learn more about that agenda item as well. Um, also, our Housing First funding, it seemed that this there's a position that's being added um, through the in collaboration with the county. Um, it's a case manager position, so it'll be able to provide more assistance to the residents. And there has been some some difficulty in hiring a person just because of the labor issues that we're seeing across not only our city, our state, but the nation. And then there's also 
um, funding for the cerebral palsy home program. I think it's one hundred and ninety thousand dollars for a hundred unit apartment community. So, and then quite a few zoning cases. I know there's yeah. one in your district yeah. that sounds like it's going to be uh, interesting. And we, you know, went to our district advisory board, then went to the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission, and then back yeah. to the district advisory board. So. It's a first since I've been on council. Uh, the the first denial I don't really count. They they wanted more information and we didn't have it, and the applicant hadn't given it, and the request for MAPC to send it back so we had more time. MAPC granted that, and then we had a really good presentation. The district advisory board approved it, and then it goes back to MAPC and they deny it. And I have not seen a DAB approval and an MAPC denial. Usually it's the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'll be really curious to hear about this one and probably want to talk to you between now and then just to learn more. Yeah. So that's coming up. And Busy week. Yesterday was the vice mayor's birthday. <laughs> so happy belated birthday. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It was a great day. It was a busy day. I um, had the opportunity to engage with some community members, but then also get to, you know, do some birthday celebration last night. So thank you. So if you would like to drop off Mountain Dew or Smarties, <laughs> the vice mayor would be really happy to have those. Diet Mountain Dew, please. Diet if I'm going to get really specific. <laughs> There was a Diet Mountain Dew in my day yesterday. I can say that for sure. <laughs> and other than that, we have the State of the City next Thursday at 6 p.m. at Mary Jane Teal Theater. So hope to see everyone there for the State of the City and hear how we're doing and where we're going. Yeah, I think it's always a, a nice opportunity to reflect back on the yeah. work that we've done. Um, you know, where I think sometimes we're always thinking forward, which we should be forward leading, but it, it'll just be nice to kind of look back and, and think about the year of 2021 and some of the successes. Um, you know, we are an elected body. We work together. Um, we do nothing alone and we do everything, you know, we have vote on things together, but um, I think it'll just be a great chance to highlight for the community what their city is doing for them. Yep. And that's truly what we're doing is for the residents of the community. Yep. Well, hopefully we don't see any more flashes of winter and we can truly have spring going forward. Absolutely. We always <laughs> have crazy weather. Um, Tuesday night, the, the lightning that we yep. had, that was incredible and then just rain and i know we need we need water and it's it's good but wow that was a lot of rain that came really fast yeah, really and fast. then like i said with the snow but it's all ending on a good note so yep. that's great awesome well with that just want to thank everybody for joining us please be sure to subscribe and follow on apple spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts